Okay, so Chainsaw Man episode 3 is here, and in this video we're about to break down the main things you need to know. During this third episode, Denji brutally fights against the Bat Devil, and today we'll be explaining why Power let that happen, and one of the major historical differences between the world of Chainsaw Man and the real world. Before we get into it though, if you've been enjoying these weekly reviews, then I'd really appreciate it if you hit that sub button, and as usual, drop a like as well as it does help out the channel. Alright, so at the end of episode 2, Power destroyed the Sea Cucumber Devil, and like I explained in that previous review, she was 100% not allowed to do that. According to Japanese law, government devil hunters like Power aren't allowed to kill devils that the civilian devil hunters are already engaged with. The way I see it, this rule is just a good way of protecting the wages of the civilian devil hunters, since they only get paid based on the devils that they capture and kill. And so by Power killing the Sea Cucumber in this way, it potentially means that this guy might not get paid. Anyhow, episode 3 then begins with Makima explaining to Power why what she did was against the rules, but Denji somehow also manages to get in trouble for failing to control her when she ran away. Following that, there were two interesting things we learned from this whole scene, the first being about Power's relationship with Makima. As we saw last week, Power usually has an outgoing personality, and she views herself as superior to both humans and other devils, but when it comes to Makima, she instantly shuts up when she's told to, and was horrified when she thought she might be in trouble. This shows us that unlike Denji, Power is able to acknowledge all of Makima's red flags, and she knows their lives are on the line if they mess up. Secondly, in this conversation, she throws Denji under the bus by trying to frame him for what happened, and this was a subtle indication of how she'd be willing to betray him again later in the episode. In her own words, she made it pretty clear that she's always had this inherent hatred for humans, and so from the first time they met, Power was always willing to sacrifice him if it benefited her in some way. This brings us to the next scene where she reveals that her true motivation in life is to save her pet cat Miaoi, who was stolen from her by a devil. In the last episode, it showed that she had a fascination with cats, and that's because they're the only species that she actually gets along with. If we flash back to when Power first became a fiend, she survived by drinking the blood of various animals, but initially she decided not to eat this cat because it was too skinny. Instead, what she wanted was to let it grow bigger before she drank its blood, and in the process she looked after Miaoi until it turned into a nice pudgy cat. By the time that transformation was complete though, the two of them had already grown attached to each other, and for the first time, Power had lost her urge to kill something. However, out of nowhere, one night Miaoi was kidnapped by the Bat Devil, who was injured from a previous battle he had with Devil Hunters. Having lost his arm, he wanted human blood to regenerate himself, but was too weak in his current form to go out and find someone. That's why he kidnapped Miaoi as a way to force Power to capture a human for him, but before she could complete the task, she was captured by Makima. As a result, Miaoi has been with the Bat Devil this entire time, and because she isn't allowed to leave Devil Hunter HQ by herself, she's not been able to do anything about it. During her conversation with Denji, she's reminded of her pet thanks to this random cat that she picks up, and she admits to him that she'd do anything to get Miaoi back. Although he initially had zero interest in helping her, he casually mentions that he'd be willing to do anything to fondle some melons, which gives Power an idea. In exchange for Denji helping to save Miaoi, she offers him the chance to feel her chest, therefore allowing both of them to fulfill their dreams. Of course, this whole proposal was fake since she was planning to betray him, but as usual, Denji ignored the red flag from earlier and decided to trust that she was just being honest. The possibility of grabbing boobs is just something that he couldn't pass up, and so he was willing to look past Power's obvious untrustworthiness if it gets him where he needs to be. Following that, the two of them venture off to confront the Bat Devil, and this moment was hilarious mainly because of how Denji was able to control himself by staring at her melons. Remember, at the beginning of the episode, we saw how badly these two can argue when they disagree about something, but here, when Power is annoying him, he simply pauses for a second, looks at her chest, and then just lets it go without arguing back. To put this another way, he's literally harnessing his horniness to control his other emotions, which, to be fair, is the most mature thing he's done in the entire series so far. Meanwhile, back at Devil Hunter HQ, Makima has a meeting with the higher-ups, and from this we find out that the Soviet Union is still a thing in this universe. Because Chainsaw Man is set in an alternate version of history, it means that certain major political events never happened, allowing for huge differences in the timeline. One of those differences is that the Soviet Union never collapsed, and in this moment someone mentions that there are people inside the country who are kind of eager to engage in a war with the US. The American master is referring to some unknown political event happening in the United States, which for whatever reason has got the Soviets super angry. On top of that, they're also potentially using devils for military purposes, which to be honest, I'm surprised that this is just a rumor. We all know that if devils were real, then pretty much every country on earth would be fighting for control of the strongest ones. But here, they're surprisingly making it sound like using devils for war is something that doesn't ordinarily happen. 
As the meeting comes to an end, the higher-ups ask Makima about the progress of her experimental squad, referring to Special Division 4, and she implies to them that power has a lot of potential while Denji is interesting. On the car ride home, Aki then gets salty about that comment since his belief is that Denji's just a gross idiot who doesn't deserve any kind of praise. Part of this saltiness is caused by jealousy, which I talked about in my previous video. However, there's also the fact that at this point in time, his experience with Denji has been pretty much awful. As far as Aki has seen, Denji is just an annoying roommate with no convictions in life, who believes he can be friends with devils and can apparently turn into a devil. Although as of right now, he's not even seen that potential for himself. Makima then replies by giving him a lesson in devil lore, by explaining that every devil out there is born with a name, and the more that name is feared, the more powerful the devil becomes. The strength of a devil is directly correlated to the amount of people that fear the thing it represents, meaning that something like the coffee devil would be weak, whereas a car devil would be stronger, considering that people die from car accidents literally every day. Given that Denji can turn into the chainsaw devil, his potential makes him an interesting case, but Aki doesn't want to hear it as he sticks to his belief that Chainsaw Man isn't fit to be a devil hunter because he doesn't have any real motivations or goals. Now switching back to Power and Denji, after getting off the bus, the two of them then arrive at the house where the bat devil is hiding, and as they walk up to it, it was kind of funny how she thought Denji was joking when he said that he didn't want to chainsaw out. Like what this shows is that even by the standards of this world where there are devils everywhere, his powers are still so ridiculous that even an actual devil thought he was talking nonsense. Anyhow, as they get closer to the house, he starts to realize something's wrong, since back on the tram, Power told him that she couldn't get close to the bad devil, because if she did, then it would use Miyawi as a shield. Therefore, the fact that she's walking this close to the house directly contradicts what she said, leading Denji to finally understand that all of it was a lie. As the two of them then quickly draw their weapons, this split second was the crucial moment, because if he was able to land a hit, then he'd be able to just run away and tell Makima. But if Power landed the hit, then Denji would get fed to the Bat Devil. Sadly for him, he misses by an inch, and after getting knocked down by the Blood Hammer, she drags his body into the abandoned house. One thing I love about the Bat Devil here is that he's basically a connoisseur of human blood in that he knows which kind tastes best and you know from this episode we learn that the blood of children is great, the blood of pregnant women is even better, but the blood of other devils pretty much tastes like raw sewage. That's why when he drinks Denji he almost chokes because of how disgusting it is, since Denji being a devil hybrid means his blood tastes like crap despite him looking like a human. Still though, it was enough to regenerate the Bat Devil's missing arm, bringing him back to full and complete strength. With his full power, he no longer had to keep hiding in this abandoned house, and his first order of business was to wash the taste of Denji's tainted blood out of his mouth by eating some of the children in the nearby town. Before that happens though, Power understandably wants Miyawi back, because the whole reason she betrayed Denji in the first place was based on the promise that her cat would be returned. However, one thing we need to know about this universe is that a binding contract can only be made between a human and a devil, meaning that when Power made this agreement with the bat, there was nothing actually holding him to his side of the deal. This explains how he had the free will to completely ignore their agreement, and he swallows Miyawi whole as punishment for having to drink that tainted blood. Immediately after that, he eats Power as well before flying off, and this is the moment where Denji kind of turned into a typical shonen protagonist, at least for a few seconds. Usually in most shonen anime like this, the MC never gives up because he has some kind of noble goal that he's like striving towards. But in Denji's case, although his goal isn't really that noble, he's at least in this episode not giving up. Despite being betrayed and nearly killed, his goal of touching melons is still more important to him than anything, and so he's willing to keep going even when he's already been beaten down. To be fair, there is also the element that Denji knows how it feels to lose a pet, because at first he thought Pachita was dead, and there's the other time when he lost Pachita before finding him again. So yeah, he knows what it feels like, and so in that sense, he's able to empathize with power about what happened to Miyawi. That being said, he still makes it super clear that his primary motivation here is boobs. In that way, you could say that Aki was wrong when he said that Denji has no motivation or conviction, because here we can see he's painfully tearing apart his own face just for the chance to grab some melons. To Denji, his goal is as serious to him as anyone else's, and so he's willing to get hurt if it means he can rip the Bat Devil's stomach open and get to touch Power's chest. What follows this is a compelling fight between Chainsaw Man and the Bat Devil, and for me, this was epic from start to finish. The choreography made this significantly more engaging than the manga, which is what you want an anime to do, and they got it right when conveying just how unhinged and crazy Denji is as a person. One of my favourite parts in terms of animation was when Denji was struggling to stand up when the Bat Devil blasted him with the sonar cannon. And in case you're wondering, I'm 99% sure this ability is inspired by bats using their voices for echolocation. 
The way everything shatters when Denji crashes into it was great, but it also helps to show us just how durable his tiny human body has become. The fact he can survive an attack like this and hold up a car with his bare hands, it's a level of super strength that wasn't that apparent in the first two episodes. Also, while we're on the topic of him holding the car, it was in this moment that Denji immediately lost any claim he might have had to being a typical shonen protagonist, because even though he knew a guy was inside, he still threw the whole thing as a projectile weapon. When you compare this action to how we saved a girl's life moments earlier, it's hard to tell whether he's interested in being the hero type or not. On the one hand, if he truly didn't care about civilians, then he wouldn't have bothered trying to help this girl, but on the other hand, he clearly didn't care about this random guy's life. My thinking is that the difference between these two actions is purely due to Denji's insane horniness, because if we imagine for a second that a woman was in this car instead, I don't actually think he would have thrown it. His language here also blatantly suggests that he just prefers saving women over men, and no manga spoilers, but chapter 103, if you read the whole of that, it just basically kind of confirms that yeah, he is doing this for the ladies, like that's why he's doing it. Anyway, this episode comes to an end with Denji tearing apart the Bat Devil once and for all. And what was funny about this is that this huge devil begs him to stay away from him, just like how the zombie devil did in episode 1. Overall, I'd give this episode the first 10 out of 10 of the season. I mean, the animation was flawless, the, the voice acting for the Bat Devil was perfect. So honestly, there isn't anything here to stop it being a perfect 10. That being said though, this is just my opinion at the end of the day, so let me know in the comments down below how you rated the episode, and be sure to check out my previous reviews if you're new to the channel. Until the next one, peace out.